In this video, I will mostly be talking about Tokyo Ghoul, but towards the end, I will mention a few things about Tokyo Ghoul Re. No spoilers, of course, in this video, but I will have to show some panels to convey my points. But of course, I won't give any context for some panels. Tokyo Ghoul surprisingly didn't have that long of a runtime. Sure, it did have over 250 chapters, but most highly successful manga have far more chapters than that. In this rather short amount of time, Su Ishida's artistic capabilities improved drastically across Tokyo Ghoul's runtime in almost every way. In the first parts of Tokyo Ghoul, the art style is nothing necessarily to write home about. For its credit, it looks slick with clear straight line work, fitting the series aesthetic when it comes to its depiction of ghouls, whilst at the same time, the art has this rough and gritty aesthetic, especially when it comes to shading. It gives this underlining darkness, also fitting the series and the ghouls. In these few parts, the art does not necessarily have that much detail, nor does it use its shading often. It's mostly used for more impactful panels. Detail is mostly found within the filters and patterns Ishida gives to their characters' outfits, and the characters along with the world are mostly drawn in black and white. Later on, the series' art style changes drastically. Slick line art remains while also becoming more rough and gritty. Along with that, the shading also drastically increases. Sui Yushida utilizes gray tones far more often, along with cross-hatching and dark shading. All of these combined gave Tokyo Ghoul's art style far more of a detailed and unique look to it, cross-hatching especially. It allowed Yushida to give shapes in a 2D environment. All of this combined gave Tokyo Ghoul a truly unique look. Ishida utilizes more of a, to explain it best, in the first parts of Tokyo Ghoul when trying to convey a character's emotions, he didn't necessarily shift the art style that much. Most of the detail and expressions came from the characters' faces. But later on, what characters feel is directly reflected on the art itself, with bald lines and shading and humming almost surreal. But when Ishida wants to convey calm emotions, he doesn't utilize gray soft shading. I also found Su Ishida to utilize paneling far more effectively, and use paneling to establish what kind of a personality a character has, or to even express them even more, like this panel. It's so goofy and it also kinda fits this character. The stiff poses found within the first few chapters of the manga are completely gone. Instead, every shot is dynamic, brimming with personality. To be able to draw detailed things is one, but to apply all that to the 3D environment with natural framing is a gigantic task, and Ishida improved upon this tenfold in just 100 chapters. The action scene became more dynamic, fluid, detailed, and clear. Ishida gave these panels far more time to breathe and are less cramped. Each panel has far more space to it. Not to mention the choreography and set fights. Every shot is framed in a different way, allowing each individual panel to stand out. Even action scenes can become boring sometimes if not executed properly. But in Tokyo Ghoul, there isn't such problem since absolutely every single shot in a fight is framed differently. The characters themselves, of course, also became far more detailed. Their facial construction became more honed, they gained a lot more detail, making them stand out and be more distinguishable from each other. In the first half of Tokyo Ghoul, the eyes were necessarily not that different from each other, especially for the female characters. They shared the same eyes across almost all of the female characters, and this could be jarring to some. But later on, each individual character is completely distinguishable from each other and they share almost no similarities. Most of the details that have been applied later on is to the hair, faces, total anatomical shape, and also to what kind of an outfits characters wear, especially the wrinkles of the clothing. On paper, wrinkles doesn't necessarily sound that pleasing, but in reality, compare these two panels, you can find a world of a difference. Rize's design isn't necessarily that complex in terms of overall detail, but how Sui Ishida draws folds on cloth really makes a world of a difference and makes everything pop and stand out. Anatomically, Tokyo Ghoul was always accurate. There weren't many changes, aside from small tweaks to the heads and faces. The bodies also changed. They grew and got more slender and sleek, which also made them stand out more. The characters in Tokyo Ghoul always changed their outfits depending on the story's theme and also the season of the month. No one outfit necessarily overstays its welcome and is always fresh. This is good in multiple ways. For example, if you dislike a character's design, you just have to wait a few chapters until they get a new outfit. Along with that, this shows the progression of time and the progression of the story itself. Another small detail I picked up is, in the earlier parts of Tokyo Ghoul, whenever there are characters in smaller panels, and if said characters are in the foreground, Ishida does not draw their eyes. Which could be jarring to some, but of course, later on, Ishida could do smallest of details to almost every single character in the foreground. The backgrounds in Tokyo Ghoul were always there, 
in enough detail and often enough so that you never feel lost or as if the characters are standing in a white void. But later on, the detail in the backgrounds skyrockets. Just think about how long this took Suishida to draw is absolutely phenomenal. In the first half of Tokyo Ghoul, the backgrounds were not drawn in the same amount of detail. They were mostly constructed in line art, white space, and some dark shading. But later on, the backgrounds are constructed with gray shading, whites, and line work. Not very taxing to the readers. This allows you to focus on the foreground and on the action, giving you the best of both worlds. The reason gray shading is so good is, if a character is in a foreground, you could use white space around them to highlight them, while also at the same time showing the background around them. This gives you best of both worlds, giving you a detailed and pleasing background to look at, along with distinguishable and standout characters in the foreground. Tokyo Ghoul's art style change also reflects its story change. At the start of the series, just like many others, it was simple. Over the time, it became more complex, developed, and introduced more characters and plot points. The themes of the series also changed and became more philosophical, surreal, and thought-provoking. This directly mirrors Tokyo Ghoul's art style evolution. At the start, it was more simple and cartoony, later on it became more detailed and stylized. In order for Tsui Ishida to convey what he wants the reader to feel and what kind of uh, themes he wants to tackle, he changes his art style. This is of course a really good way to hit home what you're feeling and what you want other readers to feel. To at least briefly talk about Tokyo Ghoul Re, to be honest, most of the things I said about the first series also applies here. Sui Ishida of course starts off way better in terms of art. It started out more simple and slowly everything gets more complex. But not to the same extent as Tokyo Ghoul. The shading methods are more toned down, especially the cross hatching. It's replaced with more common grey toned shading. Even the backgrounds are changed in the same way as the first series. Starting out strong, but later on, it gained incredible levels of detail. The character designs improved around the same time. Each of the main characters and even the side characters all look unique, distinguishable, and they all pop. In comparison to the first series start, when most of the characters, especially the female side characters, facially especially looked kinda the same. If Tokyo Ghoul went for a more surreal approach to its art, then Tokyo Ghoul Re is going for a more realistic style with its soft shading. Some of the best panels seen in the series comes from Tokyo Ghoul Re. To see and comprehend how Sui Ishida went from this to this is absolutely mind-blowing. Makes you think that some mangaka improves so much so fast, whilst others stay stagnant. There isn't anything wrong in staying in your comfort zone, but at the same time, changing your art style as the series progresses, fitting the type of story you want to tell is a really good way to make the series fresh, especially when each change improves upon the latter. But of course, the best change is when the current product resembles its predecessor. Tokyo Ghoul's art style in many ways reminds me of Bleach. It changed so much over the course of its run, but would have a sleek line work whilst at the same time utilizing its shading in a contrasting way. Speaking of Bleach, thank you all for your love and support on the Bleach video. It is absolutely mind-blowing how well that video did. I thank every single one of you, it really means the world. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if I missed anything in this video, I'm sorry. Know that I'm more... I'm not necessarily that familiar with Tokyo Ghoul as I am with Bleach. But nonetheless, if you still enjoyed this video, like, sub, bell, don't be cringe and uh, yeah, have a nice day.